Okay, so I am a second year doctoral student um, studying the intersection between cultural heritage and um, technology and looking at convergence issues between archives, libraries, and museums. I'm also a girl raised in the South and a mother of twins. And what connects us in the South is our um, love of food ways, but another thing that connects us is our complex racial heritage. So as a young black woman, I wanted to explore the objects in the museum to understand who I was, and that's why we come to the museum. We come not to look at blockbuster exhibits, but to seek answers to the question of who am I? But what happens to people of color in search of an identity when they don't feel engaged with the museum? I'd like for us to reimagine the museum as a kaleidoscope. The museum itself is a cylinder. The colored bits of glass and paper represent the diverse racial groups. The mirrors are its objects, and racial identity is the light in which we produce a multifaceted vision, a racially kaleidoscopic vision. As an employee and lover of museums, I'm often left wondering, where are all the people of color? Where are museums headed with all of this brilliant, innovative work if people of color are not really actively participating in the process? Moving forward, how can we create a kaleidoscopic vision of what culture is? The Korean chairman for the International Council of Museums argues that the global mission for the museum in the 21st century is communication for all without any barriers between groups and individuals. And I'd like to argue that a failure to really understand the lack of diversity in museums is that barrier. Everyone uses this term diversity, but I think what people of color hear is the term other and then disengage. We should be using the term race because the fact is that we are not effectively communicating between racially diverse groups in museums. We are still crafting diversity initiatives in order to convince people of color of our value. Only 9% of museum visitors are people of color, and this got me to thinking, what are museums communicating to racially diverse populations? We should be using and incorporating the R word because that is what's at stake. By 2040, the US Census Bureau tells us that we will become a majority minority state in which 50% of Americans will be people of color. As a researcher, I'm interested in how this will translate digitally. We know that we have a digital divide. What I'm concerned with is the gulf between minority users accessing museums' websites and the number of minorities um, using their social media platforms. If we can't get these numbers to translate physically, how will we get them to translate digitally? Museums have to consider race and diversity because we know that U.S. incomes are decreasing as the number of minorities are increasing. We also know that the majority of museum audiences in America are primarily white. We're, we're going to have a 7% shrinkage in that museum um, audience. There are some big questions for us to consider. What does inclusion look like in the museum for people of color? What does it feel like and what does it sound like? Importantly, again, how will this translate digitally? If museums are about people and not about objects, we have to go about the business of developing ways to create active participation for the majority minority online. <laughs> For a country with such a complex racial history, the truth is that it is difficult and awkward and uncomfortable sometimes to talk about race. But true racial diversity means that museums have to be, equal, have to be diverse in terms of marketing materials, staff, and collaborative partnerships and programming. We enjoy a strong web presence and we've moved beyond using social media as a marketing tool, but I think we've not truly understood the power of social media to draw visitors of colors to the museum space. In terms of social media, how racially diverse is your museum? Who are the friends of your museum's friends and who is retweeting your museum's tweets? Here's what we do know. We know that people of color are connected via mobile devices. Of weekly Facebook users, we know that 71% are Asian American, 53% are African American, and 52% are Hispanic American. Again, is this usage in any way representative of your museum's social media platforms? If not, how will you address this? Technology is changing the very definition of what constitutes a museum at the same time that changing racial demographics are reshaping cultural I'm um, sorry, racial identities. Globally, we are more connected than ever, and the term community is being used more to reference who we are speaking to online, what conversations are taking place there. Without realizing it, silence can be viewed as an act of exclusion. Hesitance and inaction can also be viewed as an act of exclusion. 
In what ways have museums established patterns of inclusion and exclusion? It's not enough to draft diversity initiatives if we are not truthfully assessing the efficacy of our work. So let's get funky. <laughs> let's do the work that needs to be done. I'm not sure that I believe yet that museums are just not for everyone when clearly everyone is not using the museum. People want to see themselves in totality, not in sparse chunks. They want to see their shared authority and equity and power. The fact is that we need to learn a new language. We need to learn the language of cultural competence. We need to understand what racially coded language is and the exclusive messages that it sends to our users and non-users. And then that way the image of the museum will change and we will see greater participation. The mission of the museum is to collect and preserve the entire depth and breadth of the memory of humankind. True cultural heritage is centered on the fact that we are remembering that in a complete, and telling a complete story. It would be like using a kaleidoscope that only has green beads inside. What I don't want to see is what's happening in LA where people of color are creating their, their own museums and telling their own stories in such a way that we kind of have what I have been calling a ghettoization of culture. It's time for some deep unbundling, like what's pictured here. This is the tents exhibit in France at the Centre Pompidou where the museum has gone out um, to people of color. I'd like to argue that the kaleidoscope holds the viewer's attention because there is some startling beauty in its diverse colors and patterns. Museums have the ability to sustain the gaze of people of color if we make our vision and mission racially kaleidoscopic. Let's go back to our museums and see how we can do that. Thank you. Yeah.